Welcome to Tech News Briefing. It's Friday, October 13th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. A diagnosis of Alzheimer's can be devastating and often comes late for many people. But researchers say artificial intelligence could open a new era in the detection and treatment of the disease, which afflicts more than 7 million Americans. Reporter Vipal Manga joins us now to talk about this. Before we get into the technology being developed, can you tell us some of what the challenges and limitations are with today's tools for diagnosing Alzheimer's? It's really difficult for people to diagnose Alzheimer's. It's very unclear still what causes Alzheimer's. So people are looking for ways to figure out whether someone who's exhibiting the symptoms, dementia, personality changes, actually has that disease. One of the things they found is that many people with Alzheimer's develop these plaques in their brains, amyloid protein plaques. And the best way to find those plaques is by doing what's called a PET scan. Those scans are very expensive and hard to come by, often not covered by insurance. So there are a few new tools being developed that are are utilizing AI, but can you start by telling us about this one that uses an eye scanner? It's by a company called ReadySpec. Toronto-based ReadySpec is a startup that started to look at finding these amyloid plaques in the eye. So what they're doing is they're using these what they're calling hyperspectral cameras, which record a wider range of the color spectrum than the human eye can see, and then using an AI algorithm that goes in and analyzes that image to find evidence of amyloid plaque in the eye. ReadySpec isn't the only company that's developing one of these AI tools. Are there any other companies looking specifically at the eye? In terms of Alzheimer's, there's another company based in Sacramento called Neurovision that's also doing something similar. They're also looking at the eye and trying to see if they can detect signs of Alzheimer's through their reading of retinal scans. Retinal scans are pretty difficult to read. They come out pretty dark. And for human technicians to look through the information and find out what's happening there is much more difficult than it is for a computer or an algorithm to do it. Are there any other AI tests related to Alzheimer's that are being developed? Researchers at the University of Arizona are also using AI to find the genetic triggers that actually cause Alzheimer's. Amyloid plaque is often seen as what they call a downstream effect of Alzheimer's. These people are looking further upstream and trying to find uh, what's happening in our genes that can lead to Alzheimer's further down the road. Ray Chang, who's an associate professor at the University of Arizona, told me that using his AI algorithm, he's been able to cut maybe a decade off the research in order to find some of these genetic triggers. Are there limitations, though, to using AI in this kind of medical setting? There's a lot of hype and talk about AI and how effective it can be. But I talked to a researcher at Massachusetts General, uh, Matt Lemming, who said that In any kind of lab environment where things are controlled, AI works exceedingly well and seems to show a lot of promise. The real world is a lot more complicated than a lab setting. People's eyes are different shapes, for example, or the technicians operating the machinery aren't as skilled and you get blurry images, which makes it more difficult for the algorithms to actually read images like a retinal scan. And, you know, the success of some of these large language models like ChatGPT is based on the fact that they have trillions of pages in the internet to look through. Medical data is a lot more difficult to get. There's privacy concerns, there's individual hospitals or research uh, laboratories guard it. There's no like central repository for all of this information. So it's a lot more difficult for companies like Redispec or Neurovision to access the data. In fact, a lot of them are spending thousands of dollars per patient in order to get access to data, which makes it extremely expensive for them to test and uh, develop their AI models. It's a real problem. All right, that's our reporter, Vipal Manga. And that's it for Tech News Briefing. Today's show was produced by Julie Chang, with additional support this week from Anthony Bansey. I'm your host, Zoe Thomas. Our supervising producer is Melanie Roy. Our development producer is Aisha Al-Muslim. Our deputy editors are Scott Salloway and Chris Sinsley. And Falana Patterson is the Wall Street Journal's head of news audio. We'll be back with a new show on Monday. Thanks for listening.